Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Everything Kratom, the podcast about anything and everything. Kratom. Great to have you with us on this Tuesday morning, hoping all is well with you. Don't have much time today, but I just thought I would share briefly that I tried Yellow Borneo the other day for the first time, and Yellow Borneo is pretty good in my opinion. I really liked it. And I looked into it a bit more. I I think it was actually surprisingly the most effective of any of the Borneos that I've had. I've never been a crazy proponent for like green Borneo, white Borneo I've liked. I've taken white Borneo before, but, um, and red Borneo, I guess I have in the past too, but, but none of them have like stuck out to me as like the go-to, yes, I must have this one every, you know, time I use Kratom or like, this is going to be the ideal one in this go-to circumstance always. Never really had one like that. But Yellow Borneo was pleasantly surprising. I think it was probably the most effective of all of them that I've had so far. And um, it was really beneficial for me in terms of not so much like energy boost, but it was more like concentration. And that's something that I haven't really got too much from many other types of Kratom. So I thought that was interesting. It felt very warm and kind of like a nice big hug, which was cool. And I looked into the harvesting aspect um, and the process because I don't know much about how you, you, you do like yellow types of Kratom. <laughs> and basically what I found, and of course I'm sure that there's some variation to this and it might not be completely the whole story. But from what I found, it says um, out there on the intranets that you harvest these leaves. Um, they're put through a drying process where they're exposed to sunlight, kind of like laid out on a tarp or something and exposed dried to this in you know in the sunlight for a while a few several hours at least and then um that causes this chemical reaction to to change the alkaloid content and then afterwards they take it once it's been dried in the sun and then they place it in a dark room and they ferment it for several days and so now the leaves have been dried and um and they've been put in a really dark room and they're fermenting and the fermentation apparently enhances the alkaloid content further and that's where the yellowish color comes from now again i don't know how much merit there is to this but from what i've been able to find this seems to be what happens with a lot of yellow types of kratom and i just think that's so interesting because it reminds me of it reminds me of how like there's differences in teas like there's black tea green tea um you have like uh What's the one that's kind of in the middle? It's like, uh, it starts with an O. Oh goodness, what is it? Oolong, that's it, Oolong. Knew it started with an O. It reminds me of Oolong and how that's kind of like a, almost like an in-between of green and black tea and it's like based on a fermentation process. Um, or at least that's what I've heard before, I've heard offhand. So anyway, lots of this stuff I don't know for sure. You know, I don't know too much about it, but overall I really liked Yellow Borneo. I thought it was neat. It surprised me. It was nice and helpful and it lasts a few hours. It wasn't too heavy. And I thought I'd just share a little bit about what I have found out about it. So there you have it. All right. If you know any more about this stuff, which you certainly probably do more than I do, <laughs> send it along to me and I'll share your information and maybe we'll all learn a bit more together. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow. Talk to you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>